Spencer Thomas um, from Denver, Colorado, and uh, in the spring, Carl was uh, getting a bunch of us from the Postvention Task Force together to discuss what symposia we might put together for this conference. And through that discussion um, and exploration of the topics, it became clear to me and a couple other people that there are certain issues in this field of postvention um, that create in, innate tensions. How do we create a, a culture of honoring loss at the same time making sure that we are abiding by safe standards? Some, very often that's an example of how certain things come into tension. And I thought, what a rich discussion it would be to bring the world's experts together um, to explore these topics, um, discuss and debate the certain pieces of them, uh, and you know, maybe come to come some, some resolution or not. Uh, but it would be interesting how do we to do balance that? the need to prevent contagion with the need to honor loss. And I think back to one experience in particular that we had in Colorado, where there was a cluster of teen suicides in um, a very small school district. Um, and uh, understandably, the, the, everyone was rocked by this. And the, the, the innate drive to honor and memorialize those um, who had died was very much palatable. And the students wanted to have a candlelight service. And so they called one of our um, front-running suicide prevention organizations, and they said, how do we do this? And their immediate response was, no, don't do it, nothing. It'll glamorize, it'll romanticize. And my response was, they're going to do something anyway. If they're going to do something, can we help them, coach them, be there, connect people with resources? Um, so it was just one of these automatic things of preventing contagion versus honoring loss that just came to a head in that particular circumstance. So um, I'll open it up for conversation now. Um, I guess I guess this kind of fits under what we do quite a lot, mm -hmm. and um, and I guess how to say it's often some up, up in New Zealand. There's often some cultural practices that, um, like for Pacific people, it's really it's really important to honour those who've died by putting printing t-shirts with photos on, and again it's that um, thing of all this is glamorising and sensationalising and 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 possibly really unsafe, and I guess. What we we're getting to is about balance, you know, how do we have this plus maybe some helplines on the back of the t-shirt or on the front. So you've got, so you're honouring the family and the community and what they want, but also um, looking at best practice. And I guess one example recently was a, a funeral of a young person who died and there were like, there were, I think there were three funerals, thousands of people, like thousands of young people. And they had the in memoriam and on the back they had the helpline numbers and in places where people could go, and I thought that was a really nice balance of actually, of actually ensuring that the bereaved family and the friends felt that, that the, this young person who died was honoured, but also that those who may be possibly at risk. But that was only able to come about because um, there was already a really strong post pension group in operation who were able to kind of jump in straight away, knowing what was going to happen. And often we're not in a position to actually put that in place straight away. And I guess so. One of my one of my questions I, I kind of had was. If we're working in a community, and we know that there's this thing about balance, when are bereaved families really, really, you know, when it, what's, is it okay at that stage to go and talk to bereaved families and say, hey, we think this is a risk, can we put a balance in? And I guess, so I guess that's one of my questions I have. With our program, quite often we've already seen, I mean, we, we don't just respond to families, so we respond to friends, uh, work mates, so we've often already seen number of people so we're usually involved in that discussion before it even comes out that it might be happening and particularly with young people around that and we do a lot of those you know make sure there are a lot of supports we tend to try and use words like remembrance and we have the memory books rather than a memorial book and trying to talk about the person's life rather than the death rather than the method of death what that means for them and uh, again, we also make sure, um, if it's in a community where we've been operating, standby team members are always there and will be available um, all the way through. So, and sometimes uh, we'll even uh, bring in other people. 
we'll often run evening events um, where we'll get like a GP doctor or somebody to come and have an opportunity to talk about some of the things people affect. So we try and do a number of different activities that meet a number of different needs in that time. But one of the issues we often face, and that is the huge desire people have in that memorial to do prevention. Mm -hmm. And our, our concern around that is people are jumping into prevention and not allowing their grieving experience. And sometimes that can be really difficult. So that's, for what me, that's by, a... What do you mean by prevention? What, what well, the pain is so much, you don't want anyone else to go through what you're going through. So you really want to go out and stop, prevent, but what happens, and Professor Judith Murray is, is a big, yeah, yeah. and, a, and yeah. Professor Judith Murray is a good colleague and friend and advisor of our program, and, and that's very something that she, she cautions about, because quite often that is a way of avoiding the pain of the grief, and it can come back. So for me, I'd add that in as one of the challenges we face sometimes, because we're not, we're very respectful of people, and we're not going to tell people what they can and can't do. And that can be really challenging sometimes. And then three months later, everyone falls apart because then they're getting sad, mm. because the energy's gone. I think one of the main problems is that suicide is so often unexpected. Mm. And therefore, the, uh, unless you have people very close, you're not going to be able to get that advice to them. Mm. And it, th I think it's a, a major difficulty about how we publicise what we have and how we publicise help that, that, that we might be able to give um, so that the bereaved family are able to know within a day or two of the death. Now that's, I'm afraid, in our case, extremely uh, rare. Which made um, things very difficult mm. in a way. Um, and they, they put the pictures of all these three uh, people somewhere with um, candles and flowers. We have flowers, a lot of flowers uh, at, uh, at, the mark, at the post. And uh, they called because she was a principal. She could manage, it was years ago, and, and the money was easily, easily fined. Uh, she called the crisis team, and we organized a, a seminar for the teachers and for the parents for three days which was a luxury for now, because it's impossible to get this money now. Uh, and after this, it, this was removed. The, mm. the three pictures and the, the place was removed. Only the, the book stayed. Mm. And I thought they were the ones that decided what to do afterwards. It was not us who would say, that's too much, that's too obvious, that's too glorifying or whatever. Uh, but it helped that it was right away or very soon after the, the incident, not in two months' time or, I don't know, in half a year. What happens now if it happens? Because we, we are short of money and there are no crisis teams anymore. There is no money for to go there. The only thing which we can do is th that we volunteer and have some uh, advice to the principal or to the teachers. But it's not the same as having a seminar for three days for parents, for teachers, that something is really going on, you know, that they can talk like this. And uh, so it has to be right away, has to have money, has to be decision making somehow. Uh, and then it's an effect. Otherwise, otherwise it's, uh, of course, too late and too many things go wrong, I think. To share from mm -hmm. my experience of, of working with families over many years, that I find that um, certainly in the last oh, five years in Australia, schools are much more aware of the issues of uh, sensationalizing uh, a student death. And I think are really quite careful about that in general. And for families where there's, it's not a young person, but it's been a, a, an older family member, I, I also find what they tell me about what they've done to be very thoughtful and respectful uh, to the community and, and to concerns about other people perhaps thinking this is um, a way to deal with life's difficulties. And so I, I do feel that we can also rely on, on, our, on, on folk to be quite thoughtful about that. I think that they Certainly do. About they do. I don't know about you know, the lifelines, mm -hmm. online post mm -hmm. media, which when we started five years ago, people would be saying, what about Facebook? Yeah. We don't know. We, 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 <laughs> 
you know, keep trying to furiously find something to guide us, and there was just nothing. And now there's, you know, there is quite a lot. Of, you know, there is actually information out there, and it's about I guess it's about accessing the right people to kind of monitor those those memorial sites. And there are ways now of following up young people who might be writing on them um, through and getting Facebook counsellors to actually contact them and or getting you know, these young people at schools to kind of monitor and alert an adult. So there are ways, I guess, it's also that thing of having, allowing the young people to kind of grieve in their way, but also mm -hmm. having that balance mm -hmm. of ensuring there's an adult monitoring, I guess. Mm -hmm. I kind of recognise that the, the, the biggest problem with clusters is with young people, not exclusively, because there are plenty of other ex examples. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had an example in the UK of farmers who had been affected by a foot and mouth outbreak mm -hmm. and all the cattle were slaughtered one, you know, in, in a small region and that was devastating. But it's, it's the youngsters that, that is the main problem and it is the new media. It is a different culture. Mm -hmm. We are not of that culture. We are as different as black and white mm -hmm. from that culture and somehow we have to cross that barrier.